Yetta, welcome to Australia again. Thank you. Thank so you. lovely to have you back in Newcastle. Yes, it's my third time here. Yeah. It is, and hopefully there'll be a fourth. Mm. I also do. I like <laughs> start knowing the city, and yes. the house, and yes, the, the dog, food, the and cat. the dog, and now the cat too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations on doing your exhibition here with Els van Bauer from Holland called Linguistic Marks. Yeah. Els and I have been uh, friends since I think 91 or 92 uh, and I always have, have admired Elsa's uh, sort of explosion of colour yes. and um, when we talked about having the exhibition together you know, I also knew that I really wanted to pursue my love of white and quietness um, and I think it works out really well I think this else has a colourful room and I have a quiet reflective room and I think it would almost have been too much if I had brought some of my uh, colourful things um, which also are a little older and um, so I think it's a, it's a good uh, combination. Linguistic Marks is such a great title for the pair of you. Yeah, we both all the time. Maybe that's what brought us together, that we both love books and writings and letters. So we, I think that's what brought us together in the first place. And we both have uh, used that in our work all the time. She does it more with, uh, no, well she does it with, with the embroidery a lot, which I have done too. Um, but we both uh, screen printing and writing directly on the fabric and on paper. We both work with paper and fabric. Um, so, yeah, we both like uh, up shops and looking for, <laughs> I was looking for old books and old letters. Like if you get an old book and you just, and nobody kind of looks at it, and then you should take it up and uh, look through it. Very often, Bibles, old Bibles, very often you find a beautiful old handwritten letter in there. And, uh, yeah. So you love to search op shops, don't you? Yeah, and flea markets. And they're in, I live in Belgium and in Brussels there is a big flea market that's open every day until 2 o'clock. Everything's on the floor, on the ground, not the floor, on the ground. And it's really a treasure hunt, and there's just a lot of rubbish, but every once in a while you find wonderful things. And I found uh, some old school books um, that was fantastic. And those I've used in this uh, piece here. Uh, it, it was just teaching children how to write, and it looks like the most beautiful calligraphy, but it was normal at that time to write this way. Uh, so the theme of my work, uh, or what has been inspiring me for several years now, has been the sadness of the disappearing of handwriting. Uh, I write a lot myself, and um, also because I used to be a journalist, so I still love writing, and I like the personal mark making of, of handwriting. I like to write letters, I like to receive them, and uh, it's a very, very different communication than sending texts or emails. Um, so this, this is uh, one of the things that I'm calling, one of the pieces that I'm calling words. Uh, it's about handwriting. I also borrow from Japanese culture, where white symbolizes uh, sorrow, because I didn't want to make black quilts, so I'm printing uh, words on it, and then I paint over, sort of erasing it myself, um, showing that it's part of the past, and, uh, and also I like the, the contrast of uh, sort of semi-transparency and um, yeah and uh, and the clear uh, writing which I then add 
you know, all my clothes are made like um, collage construction. So uh, this is there too. And you love your little bit of lipstick, don't you? Your tiny little bit of contrast. Yes, yes, that's always. I, I like monochromatic quilts uh, and artwork, but there has to be a lipstick, and that's it. That. It doesn't have to be red, but there has to be that little surprise color in, in the pieces. And uh, for me, it's very often red, both on my pieces, but also on my himself. Here, here. Not too much, just a little. Um, every once in a while, you are, I always strive for less is more. And like I said, I really like to work with white, but it's very difficult to stay with it, stay with it. So there's some other colors creeping in, anyway. And every once in a while, I really feel, oh, I need some color, and then I will work with color, but very often like monochromatic, and um, and then I'll go back to striving for white on white again, and um, yeah. Yeah, do you have a fabulous daily practice that you've um, taught thousands of people around the world and I know it's impacted on a lot of artists. Would you like to talk a bit about what that daily practice is? Yes, I, I'm a musician and I have for many years and I heard him play his instruments and practicing every day. So I always wondered how does a visual artist do the same thing? And the most obvious thing is to make drawings. And I like to draw, but I don't like to draw every day. So I bought a beautiful book and so I said, I'm going to draw every day. So it lasts about a week and then I stop. And then after a while, I buy another beautiful book. I said, okay, got to get back to this discipline the same results. And then one year, like uh, actually it was in November 2009, I told myself, no, I love collage. That's what I should be doing. So ever since that, I have been making a daily, every morning I make a collage with paper and it takes me about 15 minutes. Uh, it ensures that I am busy with my artwork, even if it's only for 15 minutes. Uh, I'm busy with composition, and it really, I really feel a difference in my um, sense of security or of composition. But it also makes me really happy that I'm doing this for myself. And, you know, I want to do it before. I'm making breakfast before I do a load of laundry, before I think about what to make for dinner. Uh, I'm sort of taking care of myself. And it always reminds me, every time I'm in an airplane, it reminds me when they pull this oxygen mask down and they say, put the oxygen mask on yourself first and then help somebody else. And I truly believe that that's what I'm doing um, by helping myself first or making myself happy first for 15 minutes and everybody had 15 minutes in the, in the morning. If I had to go someplace I often set the alarm clock 15 minutes earlier and uh, so every day starts good in that way. So I'm always telling students about uh, do something for yourself and, and preferably in the morning because if you do it in the evening other things play into it, people come by or the phone rings or you're tired or you have a headache and so start the morning it's like meditating in a way and um, just be good to yourself and then your surroundings will be happy too or they will benefit from it at least um, so I but you don't have to be doing collages you could you could be drawing you could be taking a photograph um, but yeah, just do something and make sure that you are sort of practicing your hand and eye coordination and uh, your sense of 
composition. So it's getting your eye in, isn't it, in lots of ways? Yeah, that really is. Your, eye, your eyes and your hands should work together. Mm. And uh, uh, you are training your eyes to, to, to see. You're not just looking, you're seeing. And that's very important, I think, as a visual artist. Yeah, yeah. these small pieces, uh, they are an example of, uh, of handwriting, but they're really my own handwriting. Uh, for several years, I would be writing three pages every morning, and I saved the journals, they're like nice big books, and I had it stacked like this, and I still have them. And then I thought, what am I saving it for? I never read anything in it, because the whole thing was just doing it. And um, it, w it was a wonderful way of, of collecting your thoughts, and I wrote a lot about my work in it. So I didn't really need to read it again, and I never showed it to anybody else. But I had all these pages. So one day I thought, well, I could use them. So I was tearing some of them out and painting over them with the white acrylic paint, because uh, it wasn't literature that was going to be published or something, but it was just sort of uh, symbolizing my personal hand make, hand writing, mark making. Uh, so I used the paper uh, here. Um, I put uh, yeah, acrylic paint over them and attach it to the fabric. I very often use combination of paper and fabric because they are so related to each other. Um, I also combine uh, machine stitching and hand stitching. Uh, in the beginning that I was working full time as an artist, I was just uh, doing hand stitching and sort of, with the result that I got excruciating pain in my right arm and thinking, well, I didn't um, quit my wonderful job at the museum to make art and then to make myself sick. Uh, so I started using the sewing machine a lot more and um, so now I do yeah, a combination of it. Uh, I still love the hand stitching. It's a completely different relationship you have to with your materials and I always work in series so I always have big series going and smaller series. The smaller series are very often only hand stitched because you get this very intimate relationship and conversation with your materials and it's not that the small pieces are sketches for the bigger pieces. It's actually more the other way around, that the leftovers from bigger pieces end up as a series of small pieces. Um, so these are, yeah, these are also both uh, stitched by machine and, and stitched by hand. And you love to cover some with a cheesecloth fabric sometimes, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's, for me, um, the quilting or the artwork, it's all about layering. And it can be layers in fabric or it can be layers in, in paper. And cheesecloth is one of these wonderful materials that is sort of semi-transparent. But you can also make so much texture with it because you can manipulate it a lot and pull threads on and out and uh, squeeze and push uh, things, making sort of openings in it. And you can dye it. It takes, it soaks up colors and what it so and rust. I have printed with rust for a long time. Um, so it's a yeah, it's a wonderful material, I think. And that I often to hand stitching in, or most of them I use that the hand stitching. You've got a beautiful series of red ones here, Yetta. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Hot spots. Yeah, right next to you this is, is a white piece with red lipstick on, so to speak. <laughs> uh, and then here's a sample of that I really need to do colour every mm -hmm. once in a while, I think. And um, so I chose red. Also because it was a time where 
I have hot flashes, and oh. uh, so that's, I call them hot spots. Hot spots, <laughs> yes. And you put little fine uh, rows, haven't you, in here, in this collage? Yeah. And there, actually, the lipstick uh, are black, uh, you often. So, yeah, like I said, it doesn't have to be red. It, uh, it's just that little surprise of, or turquoise, but mm. just very little, mm. and uh, it's still mainly mm. red. I've done blue too, mm -hmm. you know, like um, you know, like the wonderful Japanese uh, boro pieces mm -hmm. in blue indigo mm -hmm. um, as an inspiration, and uh, uh, that works really very well too. I've done yellow uh, monochromatic uh, things, and I've done, I've done quite a lot of rust, rusted of, uh, and just series on stamps that I've seen. Yeah, that's. That's the series that, like I said, I always work in series. This is my longest running series. I'm up to number 354 now. And uh, it's about stamps and about stamps of famous people, celebrities. It can be musicians, artists, politicians. Um, but I have to know something about them. I, uh, I don't Google them, but I have to know who they are and what they've done. So the reason that I never get tired of that is that every person is a small portrait of them in, in fabric, in fabric collage. And every single one of them is different. Mm. So I never get tired of them. I always get inspired of that person. And uh, if it's a musician, for instance, I would put a CD on and listen to the mm. CD at the same time. It just adds something. And I always thought it was about them, it was small portraits about them, until I had uh, an exhibition with, with them, with hundreds of them, and then it just hit me that it was just about, just as much about me, because it was all those people that had influenced me through my life, so this was my life mm -hmm. too. Um, so it was like, Sartre, mm. I remember as 18 years old, very, very mm. serious, and mm. meeting yes. Sartre. <laughs> um, Matisse, that I thought his work at the mm. time, and uh, mm. yeah, but it, I don't have to love all of them, but mm. uh, I have to know something about it. And it becomes sort of like a, a documentation of the time that I've been alive, and uh, so they are becoming more meaningful to mm. me than They're ever. They're like personal friends, aren't they? they? Yeah. Future yeah, I really feel like I have some little conversations yeah. with them. I'm sure you do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I talk to them. And, uh, and this also, I do all that by mm. stitching by hand, so it takes a while. And mm. uh, yeah, they become good memories also. Mm. And so it's a combination of several mm. things. And I still have hundreds of stamps that uh, I can, so I can continue. Yes, for a long time to come. Oh, yeah, I don't have said. I don't have said. Oh, so so and so many I'm gonna make. No, they just keep growing. That would make a beautiful exhibition in this gallery. Hey. Okay. Yes, I thought about it too, mm. but I thought it wouldn't really go together with Elsa's. Um, no, but it might be a good one you, for you. Yeah. Anyway, they look they look absolutely wonderful all yes. together. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that when people are looking at them, they first look at the stamp, mm. if they know that person, and then they look at my work, mm. and then they go back to the stamp. And I very often hear, they say, yes, that's him. Mm. Like I made one, uh, a beautiful stamp with Shakespeare, and um, then this woman that came in that was translating Shakespeare to Dutch, she looked at it and she said, that's him, mm. that's him. I have to have him. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's him. So you're selling them, not just yeah, keeping them? Yeah, Heavens. yeah. And uh, they really appeal mm -hmm. to other people too, because they have mm -hmm. similar memories mm -hmm. than I have. Mm -hmm. and, um, um, and art history is full of, of, of portraiture. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. it's a uh, it fit perfect. But there's, there's more. Mm -hmm. uh, six, 16 by 20 or something. Mm -hmm. Centimeters. Mm. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming all the way from thank Belgium you. to be back in Newcastle. It's such a treat to have you here. Mm.
Well, very lovely. I am very appreciate, appreciate my friendship with you. But, uh, that is very special. Yes, it's, it is. Yeah. And I look forward to uh, seeing you and your stamps here in a few years' time. That would be Better. fine. Yeah, I'd like to. They're easy to share. Yes. To ship too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.